Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative. Speed to Mo brings plenty about Yellowstone on Paramount Network. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Peter, for having me. I really appreciate it. It's, it's an honor to be on your show. Isn't it pretty crazy that the instant a new season of this show, Yellowstone, drops, it's like you don't even have time to process the insanity that's to come, right? Like, it's pretty crazy, like, how amazing the fans are. You know, it's like riding a, a, a wild horse. All you can do is hang on and enjoy the ride. It is. I talked to Denon Richards last year, and he says he feels like Yellowstone is like a roller coaster. It's got its ups and downs and everything. Um, Just a simple question for you. I mean, what's it like to be part of a show that has, like we kind of said, like such an amazing fan base, like an instant fan base from all around the world? You know, I'm still, it's still shocking to me. I mean, you know, I, I grew up on a reservation. I didn't expect to be in this position ever in my life. And so here I am. And, and so I'm just trying to soak it all in. I mean, and the fans are absolutely wonderful. And But yeah, and it's 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 amazing. And they are very into it. And they're very supportive of everything. Um, I, I'm curious to know the storytelling acting for you specifically how, like, can you take me to the, the early days? Like, how did that start for you? And then how did you get involved with Yellowstone? Like, can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I sure can. Um, I got involved with acting because I, and speaking to our young people on the reservations, I'd go around and try to encourage our young folks. And a lot of them, because I asked them, why aren't you proud of your cultural identity or, or who you are? And a lot of them, the, the number one response was, well, we don't see ourselves on TV. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that made sense because if, if mainstream America doesn't show who we really are as cultural people, yeah, then why do they want to be something that's not accepted? Yeah. And so I, I began to pursue through, uh, by doing theater. And so I moved to Omaha, Nebraska, got involved in community theater there and, and how I got involved in Yellowstone was I did an audition and of course, I didn't land the role because Gil Birmingham already got the role. <laughs> it was for Rainwater. And so, um, and then I got, I got casted again, but I got casted for a different role. It's a much smaller role. And uh, met Taylor Sheridan. And Taylor knows quite, he knows a family that I, I, that I know uh, from my reservation. He's very in tune with our culture. And we just continued our conversations, him and Michael Friedman one of the other executive producers, co-executive producers. And, and we just had a great connection and I love horses. He loves horses and boom, here we are. But that was my next question. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, you work on, you work on a ranch. You've, you do also horse cutting competitions as well. Um, yeah, I, well, I, I can't really say I do. I get in, I'm involved with the, with the, um, charity, uh, yep. event and it's a celebrity cutting horse event. And it's to help raise funds for an organization that helps a lot of you know people that that are dealing with uh, cancer. Yes. And so I yes. got involved with that, and I didn't know too much about horse cutting, but Taylor and and um, his wife is an amazing wife, Nicole Sheridan. They they kind of encouraged me, and so I I said, yeah, sure, I love horses, I can ride horses, and so why not? Yeah. For a good cause, you might as well. And so here we are, and. And so I go down once a year down to Texas. We're actually getting ready for our next event, so which is going to be, I believe, December 3rd of this year. Yeah, and So I, that's yeah, amazing. And, I, and, my, and we have teammates. And so last year, my teammate was Nicole Sheridan, and we end up, she had won the whole event as an individual, but as a team, we both won the event. So it was wonderful. Oh, that is that is amazing. No, that's really, really cool. Um, it just makes me think just the, the, the cast of Yellowstone – is so stacked. Like you get to work with some pretty incredible people on that show. Tell me about it. I have to <laughs> pick myself every once in a while and be like, oh my gosh, man, here I am standing beside Cole Hauser or Luke Grimes or, you know, Kevin Costner and 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 just even be sitting at, at across the table from Taylor Sheridan. I mean, it's, and even the Cole, I mean, his wife, like I said, his wife, I mean, everyone is absolutely amazing. They, they're, we're just like one big family. 
absolutely. And I'm really curious to know, Mo, your your answer to this question. Because I feel like if you asked everyone in the cast, there might be different answers because the show has so many layers and has so many characters and so much going on. I'm curious, you know, it's been on for a few seasons now. Why do you think, like, what element stands out to you in terms of why the show is being received so well, in your opinion? Is there one that stands out? Yeah, there is. It's it's um, the realities of, of today's time. Yep. You know, uh, there's a lot of a lot of the different elements. There is so many different moving pieces to the whole aspect of to the whole frame, the structure of Yellowstone. But each one of those moving elements represents a group of people in this country. Yeah. And so we can all relate and all connect, you know, and so that's why it's such a I mean, it's it's easy to get sucked in. It's, I mean, it's, it's so quick. And it, it, what was the, it was funny because you probably saw the fat reaction online. I mean, you know, the, it, the new season just dropped recently first cup, first episode. And then like, like people were right back in, like, it's very difficult sometimes with, with time off of people getting to see it. Like people were right back into Yellowstone. Like it didn't waste any time. No, they didn't. Not at all. And they dove, hit, dove right in head first. And, and it was, it was amazing. It was really good to see. What is your favorite thing about the character that you play on Yellowstone and that storyline? Is there anything that kind of stands out for you? Yeah, what really stands out for me is just the opportunity to share that we still exist as cultural people, you know, and that we still maintain our ancestral ways. And so that's what one thing that I'm very thankful and, and grateful for, you know, to Paramount, Taylor, everyone involved. And, and so that's the one thing that stands out the most to me. I I mentioned, you know, um, how you got into acting and everything. And I mentioned storytelling because that's what that that's what Mo Brings Plenty does. Like that's you're a storyteller. We see you on we we see you on Yellowstone with that amazing cast that you mentioned. I mean, you're all storytellers. Is it safe to say in your opinion that the best part the current the best part of the current state of storytelling right now, Mo, is stories that were not usually told are finally being told right now? Absolutely. 100%. 100%. I, I, yeah, you're, you, you hit the nail on the head. Because that's basically what I see. Because a lot of people are saying we're in the golden age of, of, of TV. We're in the golden age of content right now. And there's a lot of reasons. I mean, the writing is just so incredible. I mean, Yellowstone and Paramount, the writing is so good. <laughs> And then you look at, you know, how things are shot. It's beautiful. Yellowstone has that too. The scenery, the nature, the wild animals. Like it's it's just amazing to see. But I think kind of the ability to tell so many different stories now is the most powerful thing about it. And you're absolutely right. I mean, and, and I love how they use nature as it, it's just like a, a character of itself, you know, yeah. and, and she plays a very important role. And she's right there with us in, in the mix of everything. And so you're absolutely right. I mean, there's so many things that, I mean, you can take, like, for us as an example, as American Indian people, we have so many untold truths about us that are now, we are finally starting to make a little bit of headway. Yes. In that. And so we have a lot of untold stories that, that I, I believe that today's time is the right time to begin to open up that door, the, the doorway to that. Yes, absolutely. Anything kind of stand out in terms of like, cause I find that very, very powerful. What you just said right now, do you want to add to that speci- any specific ideas, any stories specifically that you, you, you want to mention? Well, yeah. I mean, you, you look at the, the big, the biggest thing for me. I mean, one of the biggest aspects is that we come, we are a horse culture, a people of horse culture. And, a lot of our identity, we did not self-create. It came from either nature or something within nature, whether it was the buffalo, the horses. I mean, we've always had horses in this country long, long before the Spanish brought theirs. And that's one thing that most of society does not even know about. Does not know. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not their fault. I mean, it's just the education system did not go that far into it. And so... To be able to share a lot of those elements and a lot of those things, I mean, yeah, I wear a cowboy hat and everything. I ranch, I work on a ranch, but I still am very true to my original identity by by braiding my hair every single day. I want the world to know that we are still here. We are compassionate, caring people, and we am, we believe in, in in equality, you know. And so, 
yeah i mean it's it's i'm thankful for it and we're getting that opportunity to share that side of it on yellowstone it's amazing it's so amazing you mentioned you work on a ranch what can you tell us about the ranch we see on Yellowstone? Is there anything you could say about that? Because everyone talks about the ranch, right? Like, that's the big talking point all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The ranch is amazing. It, it honestly is. It's a very beautiful place. Um, when you step onto that onto that place, onto that piece of, of this beautiful country, it, it takes you to another world. It, it, you, emotionally, mentally, even spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, and and for me, I often think about, you know, like Chief Joseph and and the Nurse Pierce Fields folks that once roamed there freely, um, and even now, because again, I I'm into the I, I ranch and stuff, and so how we all we're very equal in so many ways. Yep. You know, the 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 level if we had to put our our differences on a scale along with the things that we have in common on a scale. The things we have in common will by far outweigh the things that make us different. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And, you know, um, very quickly, I just wanted to say, you know, um, based on what you talked about, you know, there is a passion for horses. There's a patch for being a rancher, like you just mentioned. What is your favorite thing about working on a ranch? And what's your favorite thing about being a storyteller? So part A, part B question for you here. Okay, part A. The thing I love about being a rancher is your days are long. And at the end of the day, you really know that you honestly did something for the day. <laughs> I mean, <maybe> you're exhausted. <laughs> I'm like one of those little kids sitting in a high chair trying to eat and trying to stay awake all at the same time at times. And, and um, just to know that we, we are a game changer in society, you know, we want to be able to provide, you know, uh, uh, cattle that, that are loved, that are cared for, and, and we do care for them, you know, um, and so that's, that's the part A, and the part B was, I, I forgot what part B was. Storytelling, like the story. Oh, storytelling. Yeah. This, the part B for me is to be able to bring the, the, the voices that went unheard from the past to life today. It's kind of what we said too, right? About the age of storytelling as well, right? Yeah, and what I love about why I'm able to 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 be in both different realms is because the cowboy culture and the American Indian culture are are almost parallel to one another in so many ways. I mean, if you go back to the, when we talk about culture and traditions, the cowboy culture is important. And the native, the American Indian culture is very important to yes. me. They're both very important. And so if I can encourage and help keep this maintained and do the same without forgetting who I am and where I come from, then that's, that's what makes my days long. That's great how you tied the two together. That, that is yeah. very, very interesting. And finally, before we wrap up, um, they're going to watch Yellowstone on Paramount Network, Paramount Plus as well as where they can also watch it as well. If, um, where what do you hope they get out of it takeaway wise when they get to watch yellowstone i hope they get to see uh the realities of life that that a lot of folks don't get the opportunity to see i mean you know out in the country it's a little different world yep. and and there are struggles and um, that that do exist you know uh the protection of your cattle the protection of land all of these things are a true true issue not just for ranchers, but also for us as American Indian people. I mean, and we all know if anyone ever reads history and knows history, we'll understand and know that we're in the same boat. That's why I say both cultures are parallel to one another. And, and so that's, that's what I hope that they see and, and, and they wake up to the understanding that, hey, without us, you may not have no grocery stores. Wow. And so... We, we don't only need you, but you also need us. And, and, and we need to be protected as well, not just as American Indian people or not just as ranchers, but we are also in the same realm and the same boat as everyone else. Wow. No, that is, uh, that is some, some, some amazing nuggets of wisdom on the show. <laughs> um, Mo, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on Pop Turner to chat about Yellowstone. Seriously, thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you, Peter. But so it's been an honor. Thank you for having me on. The Absolutely. Show. So yeah, they can watch Yellowstone on Paramount Network, and we're gonna be able to follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything. Instagram, I believe, would be the best place, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's just Mo brings plenty on Instagram. Yep. Yep. Mo brings plenty on Instagram, and uh, my manager also helps me with that. And so because I'm so busy. Yeah. You know, we're at we're 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 getting some late cabs, so I gotta. Make sure that. Well, no, and I and I know you're very busy, and I'm vi- I it's 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 I, I'm thank you so much for coming on the show. Like I really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. So I really really appreciate that. This has been Pop Turnative YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, it says Mo brings plenty from Yellowstone and Paramount Network and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.